Hey guys, welcome back to Mo's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look inside Dark Blue Defection. This is an unofficial NATO solo scenario pack for Red Storm the Air War over Central Germany 1987 that was published by GMT. This is both designed and self-published by Howard James Rigg with the official approval of GMT Games. Let me just say right off the top that this is a fantastic quality production. Howard did an amazing job with the solo scenario pack, matching it up with the same quality that we get with the GMT game. So hats off to Howard, an amazing job there. The genesis of this was Howard felt that there were not enough solo scenarios in Red Storm and he wanted to have more. So the best way to do that is to design your own, which is what he did. And he has 10 scenarios in here, including a campaign. It's all solitaire. Everything's done for you here, which is fantastic. The best part about it is you can learn the game a lot easier because you're going through smaller scenarios as you go. Almost a kind of step learning approach, although it's not a program learning approach. It does help you to take the game in smaller chunks and learn it, which is the main reason why I got this myself. Red Storm, I've got it. I shot a video for the channel. I shared a look inside. I just haven't gotten to it yet because it's a dense rule book and it's something I need to get to. I just haven't. You know, Air War is something that I like, but I'm just not as into as ground conflict. I don't have the knowledge. So by having something like this to ease my entry into it, I think it'll be a lot better for me to digest the game that way and have a lot more fun, plus play solitaire scenarios. So let's take a closer look at all the components. And we start off with the 24 page rule slash scenario book. There are only a couple pages of rules on how to use this scenario pack. The rest of them are all the scenarios. Then we have 21 sheets that are high gloss not laminated, but high gloss, so that way you can use dry erase markers that have all different parts of the game to it. You've got your order of battle, you've got the different scenario setups, and then you have your planning maps as well, which we're gonna take a closer look at, but spread out, you have 21 individual really thick, nice sheets here. So let's take a closer look at each of these, and then we'll go through the scenario book. In Dark Blue Defection, there are three types of cards. You have the flight log sheet, you have the scenario setup cards, and then you have the pre-populated planning maps. All of this is set up to make it easier for you to get the game on the table. So we'll take a look at the flight log sheet first. At the top right, it gives you the scenario name here. It is Red Dawn. You have the different aircraft that you'll be using in the game for both NATO and the Warsaw Pact, including the counter that you'll be using, the call sign name, the aircraft type, and then you'll see all these check boxes that you've got here for fuel and ordnance that you can just right on with the dry erase marker and then wipe off when you're done with the scenario to make it easier to set up and that way you don't have to worry about all the marker tracking things like that it's all done here for you on each of the sheets and on the back we have the flight log sheet for scenario two good old uncle sam all of these flight log sheets are going to be set up in the same fashion which is going to give you all the information you need for that flight next we'll take a look at these scenario setup cards these are all set up in the same format here we have Scenario 1, Red Dawn, which we just looked at the flight log sheet for. You have the air setup for both NATO and the Warsaw Pact, and then the planning counter location at the bottom, as well as the detection level for NATO and Warsaw Pact. On the back, we have the setup for Good Old Uncle Sam, which is Scenario 2. You have your setup for NATO, the Warsaw Pact, as well as some ground setup for Radars and SAMs, and AAA, and then the planning counter locations at the bottom, as well as the detection level for both NATO and Warsaw Pact. And taking some inspiration from World War II, Howard has set up the campaign and named it the Night Witches. You have the NATO air setup and the Warsaw Pact setup, the planet counter locations, as well as the detection level for both NATO and Warsaw Pact at the bottom. Next, we'll take a look at a couple of the planning maps. This is for Scenario 1, Red Dawn. These are all pre-populated, as you can see, which saves you time. You don't have to spend that time drawing up your own plans. It makes it a lot easier when you see how everything is laid out. You can just match that on the board and get the plan. On the back, we have the scenario set up for good old Uncle Sam, and you can see the difference in the amount of counters that are gonna be out on the map from the planning map here. And lastly, we'll take a look at the planning map for the Night Witches campaign. You can see it's much more involved as a lot more of the units are out there, a lot more counters. Should be a good challenge. Next, we'll take a look at the rules slash scenario book. This is a 24 page full color book. On the inside of the front cover, we have the limited rules that are used in the game. Just one page, that's it. Start off with your introduction, which explains to you the purpose of the solo pack. 
the mission briefings, planning maps, and the scenario setup sheets, which we've already taken a look at. And then the flight log sheets explaining to you that these are pre-populated. You don't have to worry about setting anything up yourself. You just pull out from the counter tray what you need. Then the SAM AAA log sheets are not required. It says here, SAM AAA will start on the map located with radars on where applicable, or will start as a warning flak markers until activated as per the scenario setup instructions. Unactivated SAM AAA counters are to be placed on the scenario setup sheet until activated along with any acquisition workers. Due to the small scale of the scenarios, SAM units do not need to track ammo, which is really great. It's one less thing that you need to worry about. Then you have the random bot flight altitude. Once the flight is within one hex of the next waypoint on its flight plan, you roll a 1d10 and refer to this table. And on a roll one through three, there'll be no altitude change. A roll of four, you spend movement point to dive to the deck. Five through seven, descend one altitude band as a free move. And eight through 10 is spend movement point to climb one altitude band. If a bot flight reaches a waypoint within one hex with no movement points left available, still make an altitude change roll. If a bot flight reaches a waypoint within one hex with no movement points left available, still make an altitude change roll. If the roll is no change or descend one altitude band, use the result. If not, attempt to change altitude as the first action on the next turn after activation during the movement phase. If it is not possible to climb any higher or to descend any lower, treat the attempt as no change. Bot flights will never attempt to zoom climb using altitude optional rules. Some scenarios will define a bot flight altitude change at a given waypoint. In this case, do not roll on the altitude change table for those flights when reaching a waypoint. Then you also have random weather at the bottom. You can change things up a little bit by having some random weather. When rolling for good weather, first roll a 1d10 on a roll of 1 through 5 on the good weather table, on a 6 through 10 on the poor weather table. NATO player determines the location of all cloud breaks. Scenario 2, 4, 5, 6, and 8 use ordnance that cannot be used in certain weather conditions, which would make the scenario objectives impossible to achieve. Do not roll on the poor weather table for these scenarios. Reroll any haze at deck and haze at deck low results. Then we get right into the scenarios. So only one page of rules to understand how to use this scenario pack. Now, the game itself, the, the rules are pretty dense, but using this, in tandem with those rules, I think it'll make it a lot easier because you're gonna be concentrating on smaller scenarios to get yourself along in the system because it's a pretty involved system. Start out here with scenario one, you have your mission briefing, the targets, the scenario conditions, and then the NATO order of battle as well as the Warsaw Pact order of battle, then the special scenario rules over on the right hand side. That continues on to victory conditions on the next page. Then we get into scenario two, good old Uncle Sam, same setup. And then you're going to have victory conditions here. The victory points are going to be laid out for you. Then you have scenario three, morning glory. Same thing as scenario two. Scenario four, Iron Eagle. Got to have Iron Eagle in there. Anybody who's seen that movie knows what he's talking about there. Dark blue defection, which is scenario five. Scenario six, Operation Colossus. I wonder if that's tied into Colossus the Forbin Project. If anybody's seen that movie, fantastic and very scary movie. Uh, from back, I think it was the late 60s, early 70s. Then you have the heist, which is mission seven. And then scenario eight, the night witches, a call back to World War II and those awesome scary ladies of the sky for the Soviets. And then scenario nine, heavy rain. And then scenario 10, which is showdown. Then you have the NATO and Warsaw Pact forces, the flags of the nations at the back. And then we get to the designer notes here on page 22, and then a bot example of play on the next page. And then we're at the back of the scenario rule book where we have the aircraft flight log example explained to you. And we'll take a look at the additional materials that everyone who's bought the expansion is gonna get. We see here the Four Horsemen campaign. This is gonna be downloadable in PDF, so you'll print it out yourself. And we'll take a look first through the scenario setup sheets. And we have the NATO order of battle for the Four Horsemen scenario, the Warsaw Pact order of battle. Then we have the next scenario, which is a pale rider named Death. And we've got the NATO order of battle for that. And then the Warsaw Pact order of battle. Next, we have the flight log sheets. And just like we saw, same format as we get with the expansion for Dark Blue Defection. All the check boxes that you can use for both the Pale Rider Named Death and the Four Horsemen scenarios. 
Next, we have the SAM AAA log sheets in just the same format as we we're seeing before with the check boxes. You'll just keep track of all of the different states and the shots that are taken throughout the game. Then we have the scenario planning maps for the Four Horsemen full map, the Northern Sector, Southern Sector, and then the Northern Sector for a Pale Rider named Death, Central Sector, and the Southern Sector. Then we have the rules and scenario notes for the Four Horsemen campaign, same as you saw with Dark Blue Defection. Gives you all the rules and optional rules for the expansion. And then we get into the scenarios themselves along with the setup information for each of the scenarios. Then your victory conditions. And then the designer's notes at the back of the book. And that is a look at everything you get inside of Dark Blue Defection, an unofficial NATO solo scenario pack for Red Storm, the air war over central Germany in 1987, which was published by GMT Games. This is both designed and self-published by Howard James Rigg. So you can see really top-notch quality production that Howard did on this. Fantastic. It's a great compliment to the Red Storm game if you already have it. If you don't have it and you heard maybe, you know, it's a little too dense, uh, not enough solitaire scenarios in it if you're a solo gamer like me this is the answer to the problem right there for you this is going to give you 10 more solo scenarios including a campaign and it's going to allow you to take the game in chunks and make it easier to learn because the planning's already done for you the flight log sheet is easy to use because you just use your dry erase marker and then you have your scenario setup cards which is going to make it easy to get to the table Instead of having to waste all the time setting everything up and planning it, I mean, that's a great aspect to the game, but if you just want to play a solo scenario, you want to throw the game down on the table and get to playing. And this is the answer to that right here. Howard did a really great job with this. And not just this, but as I showed you, there's also more stuff which is being released soon, uh, which adds even more value to this package, and I think it's a great thing to get. It is available through Second Chance Games in the UK, and you can place the order there, and it Come, came in pretty fast. I mean, I think I got it within about a week, week and a half. So it wasn't like I had to wait six months, which is fantastic, especially given the current shipping issues that everybody's experiencing today. The turnaround in this was very fast. So looking forward to checking this one out and definitely looking forward to seeing more from Howard. I'm sure he's got some other ideas kicking around in his head and I'm looking forward to seeing what those will entail and what we can enjoy on the table from him in the future. Well, I hope that helps you guys out. I've been curious about this one. Do you have any comments or questions? Post them down below. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.